Alright, Project Dads, today I'm going to be building a tall bike. I have lots of tall bikes in my collection and I've been, I try to build a new one every year and so I've been waiting um, to start this build and actually video how I make one. Um, I will be welding in this video. I'm not a great welder, but this will be my tall bike build using two bike frames. These are some of the other tall bikes that I have built. Some I don't have any longer, but this one's the one that my 10 year old daughter rides. This one is my 13 year old son's. This one's the BMX tall bike that I built to ride at the skate park. This one is my 16 year old daughter's. This one was my old, or this was the first tall bike I ever built. And then this is my tallest. I'm not gonna go taller than that one today. I probably won't go taller than that to be honest because I like to make them so that I can mount and dismount without using an object but just doing a rolling mount and dismount which I should be able to show you later once I get this one built. These are the bikes I'll be using. This is a, um, a couple department store bikes that somebody dropped off here at the house. It's a 29er and a well, 700 so they're the same wheel size. I'm going to be using this 29 inch mountain bike as the base frame and using the frame behind it as the the other frame some people call this a double decker bike but this was just should be a pretty simple build but only time will tell there's also going to use some scrap steel uh, not going to be really spending any money on this just stuff that i have around the shop first thing i need to do is get these bikes onto this stand and start taking off what I don't need and getting ready to cut them up and make them into something much taller. I've stripped off most everything off of this frame. This is going to be the top frame and this will be the bottom frame. The next step is to, um, I got to pull the fork off of this one and make an extended steerer so it'll come up to this one. And that's going to help me find out where I'm going to mount the frame and how high I want to be. A um, couple things that might be problematic. I was going to make this a single speed, but now that I look at this rear, it's actually got a, um, well, I think that's actually a cassette instead of a freewheel. I'll find out when I pull it. Um, if it is a cassette, I don't have spacers to turn that into a single speed and I might end up having to put a seven, I guess one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah, put a seven speed on it. It'd be nice, but it just adds complexity and that's not something I like. Um, both frames are steel, so they should weld just fine. I'm going to figure out my chain line after I put them together. Ideally, I like to run the chain from this at an angle down to the to the back wheel if the um, usually the brakes get in the way and I can't run rear brakes but if the uh, seat stays get in the way what I can do is run a single up here straight down to a double on this bottom bracket and then come straight back that way I would have to use two chains though you know chain from top to bottom and then front to back I've um, I've set it up before, but I've never used it because again, I like simplicity. So I'm going to start pulling these forks apart, and once I get everything lined up, I'll show you what I'm going to do. Another thing I forgot to mention: when I weld these together, some people leave these rear um, the drops or the chain stays and seat stays leave them hanging off the back. Some people turn them in, will cut off just the seat stays and leave the chain stays to to be a rack. I don't like any of that because when I'm mounting and dismount, I don't want anything back there to get into my way. So I'm going to take my cutoff wheel and I'm going to cut them off and smooth them out here and whoop, right down here. And so that way I'll just have the, the top triangle on this bike and then that bike's complete. So my weapon of choice is always the angle grinder with a cutoff wheel. So I'm going to probably have that done by the time I come back.
Okay, this is probably the hardest part of the build, and that's getting this fork just right if you want an enclosed steer tube like I make all of mine. So this is the fork off of the top frame, and all I did was I, I cut it, this part, it's trash. This is the fork on the bottom frame that I'm gonna be actually using for the bike. So I took the threaded portion and I cut it off. I could have kept it, but it's a lot thinner steel, and I'm gonna be welding to it in this cheap steel. It burns right through. So I cut it down to where the thick stuff started. I drilled, I drilled holes, four holes in here, so that I can have extra welds, some rosettes. And then I take, this is a piece of, I believe it's galvanized pipe, and I find something that fits in here decently snug, and I put it all the way in. I'm going to weld around here. I'm going to weld in these these uh, four rosettes, and that should give a nice, strong, um, strong bond. Now, for this part, there's probably tons of ways you can do it. I'm going to show you the way that I that I've done it before. What I'm going to do is I'm going to once I have the frames set up then I'm going to slide this all the way through and I'm going to have this on the end so that it's adjustable to the height of the frame. Now it's not going to be this big that would be a very a very very tall bike but what I'm going to do is when I stick it up through I'm going to thread um, I'm going to thread I'm going to put the bearing on I'm going to put the race and I'm going to put the top nut and I'm going to have those set to where I want them and I'm going to slide it down until it rests in the the top cup on the top frame and I'm going to mark it right along the top then I'm going to remove the whole thing and I'm going to mark the the bottom when I get it out and then I will know I need to cut it in, in between the two marks and then I can weld into here. You don't want to weld it all the way to the top or you won't be able to fit your stem in there. I learned that the hard way on my first tall bike. So I was like, oh, this is going to be great. And then I went to put the stem in and I had nowhere to put it. So that's how I'm going to do it. I'll show some more of that later. But right now I just wanted you to see what we're starting with so you can have, have it however, whatever height you want it. All right, this is how I try to figure out how tall I want my bike to be. As you can see, I've put the pipe up through. Here's all the way up here. And I have the other frame just sitting on it. And I can slide this frame up and down to see how tall I want it to be. Now I've got it, I've got an idea in my mind. I don't want this one to be super tall, um, but I don't want it to just be a double decker. So I'm probably gonna go about an extra 10 inches to one foot higher, whoa, higher than just being a double decker frame. Now for the pipe that I'm gonna to use to make a new head tube, I'm using this. Now what this is, is a piece of galvanized fence. It's the top post on the fence. And when I started using this stuff years ago, because whenever people remove a fence or throw out a fence, they have these long pieces. This is almost the exact diameter of most frames that take a one inch, um, a, a one inch headset. So it's, it's nearly the same diameter. Um, it's, it's flexible, but it's strong. If you think about all the times you've climbed a fence, you've probably never bent the top post. Now, the one concern with this inner pipe I'm using and this is welding. When you weld galvanized, the, the uh, fumes are poisonous. So what I typically do is I take my grinder and I'm gonna grind away any of the galvanized coating before I start welding. But right now I'm gonna figure out how long I want it to be and I'm gonna cut this pipe and set it in place and then I'm gonna be ready to start welding. Okay, I brought it over here so we could see it a little bit better. Um, this is not welded, this is pre-welding. I'm gonna give you just a couple tips if you are going to be doing this the same way that I've done it. Now, right now it's all just sitting in place. 
here's something to take into consideration. You need to put, before you weld it, you need to put a straight edge between that head tube and that head tube. Clamp it forward so that that stays in a straight line. If it's a little bit crooked, it's still going to work, but your steer tube is going to bang around inside the head tube. Um, back here, all I've done is I took the seat post and I raised it up and I drilled a hole in the bottom of this frame so that it can go through there and then I can weld it around here and I can weld up the seat post right here when I'm done. Now another consideration is to make sure your frame is straight this way and this. What I usually do is between this down tube and this top tube, actually I try to get three tubes, so I'll go between three tubes and I'll take two pieces of two by four and I'll clamp them the two pieces of two by four together and that holds those in a straight line this way. So you need to make sure that you're going straight this way and then side to side straight that way. This is my, uh, I guess you'd call this my jig. All I did was I took something that I knew was straight, so I just took a 24 inch level and I clamped that to the head tubes. And I've got it going straight up and down. And then I took two pieces of wood. They're not two by fours, they're one bys. And clamped those to hold them in line from going left to right. Before I start welding, the last thing I need to really do is make sure that the back of that frame is um, as high as it needs to be. So I'm gonna get that all straightened out and start welding that up. Okay, now that I've booger welded up my frame, this is the part I was talking about for the fork. As you can see, this piece of pipe that's now the steer tube that goes all the way down into the fork is sticking way up. So what I've done is I took the top of the fork that I want to use, I threaded on the race, the washer, and the top nut. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and I'm going to slide it down. I've got the bearing installed in the cup right there. And I'll put it exactly where I want it to be. Make sure that the bottom is all the way seated, the bearing is. Once it is where I want it to be, I'm going to mark it. Let me grab a marker. <clears throat> right, so I'm going to take and I'm going to mark it all the way around. There we go. So then when I pull it out, I'll know exactly where the top goes. I can line it back up and make a mark down down here inside and then I can cut it off slide it up to the mark weld it in and that's the main welding 
that I'm going to have to do on the whole bike. <laughs> so I have the fork in the stand and you can see my mark right there. I'll slide this right to there and then I will use my marker to mark it right there on the bottom. Then I can cut it off just don't like the then I can cut it off somewhere right about there to leave me enough room to stick my quill stem down in there. Well, I'm starting to assemble the bike. I've got the seat on, the front wheel, I've got it aired up. Um, for my first test ride, I'm not going to hook up brakes. I know that sounds horrible, but um, I live on a, it looks to be a flat road, but it's slightly downhill that way. And if I turn around and come back up this way, it'll slow my mo momentum enough that I can dismount. So I need to see if I need another step. It's always helpful to have a step just under the left side crank arm so you can have a step on the peg and then a step up. But as I was getting ready to mess with this rear wheel, I noticed that I have a slightly, <laughs> more than slightly bent axle. So I need to repair that before I do a test ride and try to put a chain on. So I'm gonna figure this out real quick. All right, the bike is um, assembled. Handlebars, saddle, sprocket, and I went straight to the rear wheel. And just as I suspected, um, the brake interfered, so I had to cut that brake off. Now I've got some chain problems. I didn't think about the fact that this has fixed dropouts. Um, if I I might be able to weld some different dropouts on it, but I probably won't. I'll probably just continue to run a spooky tooth sprocket like this. And um, to take the chain slop out, I run that on some of my other bikes. I might be able to put a half link in it and fix it, but I think, um, I think it's ready for its maiden voyage. Well, it works. This one is called Quarren Tall Bike. I've been quarantined for a while. Well, I guess I haven't been quarantined, but I just thought it was a good name. So there's the Quarren Tall Bike. Next time you see it in another video, it'll be cleaned up and painted and everything like that. But mechanically, that's um, how I build a tall bike. I hope you've enjoyed learning how to build a tall bike. If you've got any questions, put them in the comments and I'll answer them. Take care.